Right, welcome ladies and gents. Uh, I actually have already filmed a video about uh, James Gunn, but it's kind of irrelevant now. So we're going to watch this together. This is the announcement. This is his DC Studios plans, I guess. I don't know. I've not watched it. I caught like the first 30 seconds. Uh, my previous video is now defunct, so this is going to take its place. It was just about the backlash. Let's take a look and let's look at the comments. This is super fresh. Hey everybody, I'm James Gunn. I'm the co-CEO of DC Studios. So as many of you know, DC has been disconnected in film and television for a long time. And it's one of, you know, our jobs, mine and Peter's, is to come in and make sure the DCU is connected in film, television, gaming, and animation. That the characters are consistent, played by the same actors, and it works within one story. And if something is outside of that, like Matt Reeves' Batman or Todd Phillips' Joker or Teen Titans Go, that it is clearly labeled as DC Elseworlds outside of the mainstream DCU continuity. Confirming it. Now, Peter and I have gotten pretty lucky in terms of the four projects that are coming out over the next year. First, we have Shazam! Fury of the Gods. Shazam! has always been off kind of in his own part of the DCU, so he connects very well. That moves directly into The Flash, a fantastic movie that I really love that resets the entire DC universe. And then to move into Blue Beetle, a fantastic film about a kid who's a marvelous part of the DCU, and then into Aquaman 2, DCU. which leads directly into our next few projects, which I'm gonna tell you about now. So, Peter and I, along with a group of very talented writers, have started to map out an eight to 10 year plan of what DC Studios will be in film, television and gaming. This first chapter is called Gods and Monsters. Now this, what I'm about to tell you, is a part of the first chapter. It's not the entire first chapter. The first project is Creature Commandos. Creature Commandos is an animated series. I've written all the episodes. Something we're gonna do that's a little bit different at DC is we're gonna have characters move into animation, out of animation, usually having the same actor play their voice as who plays them in live action. The next project up is Waller. This is the story of Amanda Waller, played by Viola Davis. Fuck it. Viola hell. Davis is going to team up with members of Team Peacemaker. And this is a story that's been created by Crystal Henry, who did Watchmen, and Jeremy Carver, who created the Doom Patrol. It is a fantastic story that's out of this world, and I can't wait for people to see it. Okay, <laughs> next up is the big one the true beginning of the DCU. This is called Superman Legacy. This is being written by me. I'm in the middle of it. I'm having a great time doing it. Film. And Superman will be released into theaters July 11th, 2025. Okay, the next thing is a big premiere HBO television series called Lanterns. This is a story of a couple of Green Lanterns, Jon Stewart and Hal Jordan, and we have a few other lanterns peppered in Live there, action. but this is really a terrestrial-based TV show, which is almost like True Detective with a couple of Green Lanterns who are space cops watching over precinct Earth. In it, they discover a terrifying mystery that ties into our larger story of the DCU. Next is a big movie called The Authority. The Authority is a passion project of mine. It's based on the marvelous Wildstorm characters. We are now bringing into the DCU and will interact with all of our primary DCU characters. The Authority are a group of superheroes who think the world is broken and they want to fix it by any means necessary. I think it's a very different look at superheroes. We're doing a television series called Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost is the story of Paradise Island, usually known as Themyscira, which is the birthplace of Wonder Woman. It's almost like Game of Thrones with Westeros, but with all of the inhabitants of Paradise Island. The introduction of the DCU's Batman is the brave and the bold. The brave and the okay. bold is the story of Batman and his actual son, Damian Wayne. This is based on Grant Morrison's great comic book run. Damian Wayne is my favorite Robin. He's a little assassin who I Batman like tries it. to get uh. in line. And so this is the story of the two of them and the beginning of sort of the Bat family in the DCU. Next up is a TV series called Booster Gold. Booster Gold is one of comics' really popular cult heroes. He is a fascinating oh, guy. He's a loser from the future who uses future technology to come back to present day and become a superhero so that people will love him. It is basically the superhero story of imposter syndrome on an HBO Max series. 
One of my favorite comic book series from last year was Tom King's run on Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. And so we're gonna turn that into a big science fiction epic film. Now, Superman is a guy who was sent to Earth and raised by loving parents, whereas Supergirl in this story, she is a character who was raised on a chunk of Krypton. She watched everybody around her perish in some terrible way. So she's a much more jaded character. And that brings me to Swamp Thing, the last thing we're going to talk about. A very dark horror story in the origins of the monster who is Swamp Thing. And although it's totally outside of the rest of the DCU, it will still feed into the rest of the stories. Anyway, those are the stories that I can tell you about right now. I've loved the DC characters since I was a child. They're incredibly important to me. I knew that this was a once in a lifetime opportunity to do something very different. One of the things that's very important for me in all of these movies and TV series is that the director's vision and the vision of the writers and all of the creators is unique. Uh-huh. special. Storytelling is always king. That's all that matters to us. And I want to be true to those stories. I want to be true to you guys and really give you something different than you've ever seen before. Anyway, thank you, everybody. I appreciate you watching. I hope this was exciting for you because it's really exciting for me. And I can't wait to start to dive into these stories with you guys on this grand adventure. Thank you so much. So interested, look, I mean, some of them just sound like absolute crap, but it's interesting. The take homes from that is confirmed. Matt Reeves, the Batman, will remain separate. That is what it is. And it's DC Elseworlds. I like that. That's good. That's confirmation, clear cut. But some of this stuff does sound, uh, you know, a bit pooey. You know, this, for instance. You know, like I this, sure, whatever. Interesting as well, you know, talking about live action actors crossing over with their voice actors and stuff like that at the end of the day some live action actors can't voice act that it is a unique skill so that'll be interesting to see how that comes together like genuinely how that comes together um the the fact that he's keeping waller and uh peacemaker i think will rile a, a fair few people up i think people will be really angry about that uh, I don't like Viola Davis as Amanda Waller. I think she, I, I just don't like her characterization. Um, it, I think that'll really annoy a fair few people because it confirms that you know he's still keeping Peacemaker, he's still keeping the stuff he created, and I think that will really piss a, a good few people off. Um, Superman coming up in twenty twenty five July. That's some quick turnaround that's going to have to happen now. Like, some really, really quick turnaround, actually. Um, That's not a short turnaround time. That's going to be really, really quick. This Lanterns has just been repurposed. That's the same thing that was happening before. Same as uh, Booster Gold. This is interesting. You know, um, what are these called? The Authority is... The Authority. This could be really interesting. This is like DC's version of the boys, almost. That's kind of what that's going to be. You know, superheroes gone awry. Uh, I think that could be interesting, could be fun, but they run the risk of feeling like they're copying the boys. Uh, A lot of this is live action, which I think will be good and could be really good fun. This, Paradise Island, I don't care about Power Paradise Island. Sure, whatever. The fact that he's comparing it to Game of Thrones and stuff, eh, I I don't give a shit. Um, The Brave and the Bold, uh, the Batman, the Brave and the Bold. Eh, I don't really like Damian Wayne. I think he's actually one of the worst Robins. I think it's a, a an interesting entry point for Batman because you're skipping like half of his life, but you're rebooting Superman. It's a weird decision. It's a very odd choice. Some of it makes sense, some of it doesn't. Um, but I don't like Damian Wayne. I think he's a, a brat. Uh, Booster Gold, that's been rumoured for a while and that looks to just be repurposed. He also did confirm looking like he's confirming that blue beetle will be part of the new dc slate as well so that's kind of cool because that film is apparently really good i've heard very good things about that this could be really good actually uh supergirl supergirl woman of tomorrow i think that could be really interesting there's some interesting stuff you could do with that uh and swamp thing cool if it's an actual horror film i'm game for it Outside of that, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let's let's have a look at the response, because this will be quite telling. I think people will be really annoyed. This will be split.
Uh, I did expect James going to bring in some obscure characters because I legit don't know the authority or Booster Gold. Still not happy at Henry Cavill and Gal Gadot getting booted. But this doesn't sound like the worst plan. Um, Gunn can't write established characters so he relies on the obscure. It's a fair point. Uh, Swamp Thing, cool. So with everything now being connected, are you getting rid of the multiverse aspects? Uh, sound like the Flash was going to sort of reset. It does sound like there's the potential for them to keep Ezra Miller, which I don't like. I have many thoughts after hearing everything. Going to be honest, I'm surprised at a few things and disappointed about others. Uh, I could not be more excited. Yeah, something's going to be cool. James, can we expect to see Journey reprise her role as Black Canary? Probably not. Uh, that was definitely a jab at Marvel at the end about the... Uh, yeah, that was that was that really was a jab at Marvel about directors doing their own thing. Yeah, it does look like Shazam and Aquaman are going to be the survivors. Blue Beetle launches the DCU. Yeah, it does seem that way. Uh, so basically, the DCU is resetting and being reworked to create a new storyline that's untied, uh, untied among everything. Yeah, he didn't reveal any video games, which is interesting. Oh, great, the same. Than before again. Yeah, some of it. Some of this is exactly this. I don't know. <sighs> there seems to be a lot of positivity. I don't know what I think about this. Superman Legacy and Brave and Bold is not surprisingly for me. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. Well, anyway, we're going to dis discuss this later on tonight on the HCast live stream, so join us for that there. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Drop us down below. Drop your thoughts down below. Cheers, guys. Take care. <laughs>